Shalom. First off, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, true name, Yahweh, in the name of Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit is with comforts and guides us, especially during these times to come. The Lord's people, the Israelites, from the chosen seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob got his name changed to Israel. Today, that consists of the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Israelite foreigners that look like heathen but are not because their father's seed line traces back to one of the 12 progenitors of the 12 tribes of Israel. We're in a situation that we're in because we went off. Ultimately, that was the fulfilled prophecy of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. But like I said, the things that we go through as far as in the chastisement, the punishment, the slavery, etc., that we went through was all in order to fulfill prophecy for us to receive a greater glory on the other end because in this truth you understand that when you basically receive the, the spirit from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you understand that the ways that this world is being ran is not basically correct. It's not beneficial. You understand that the wages of sin is death because you see how America, which is spiritual Egypt, Sodom, Babylon, the great, etc. You see how the way it's being ran is not productive. And we understand the reason why that's the case is because as it's written in Job 9 and 24, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. And the wicked is the so-called white man, forefathers Esau, Edom. The Lord, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, allowed him to rule his kingdom for a season because of our disobedience to chastise his children. Basically, he chose the basis of man to be in rulership. But he has a remnant that's going to wake up, which is the one third and come up out of this polluted land mentally and seek the Lord. Basically, we're going to acknowledge our offense because a lot of people outside of this truth don't understand, like the scriptures say, we come back at every third and fourth generation. So for the people that believe that they had no parts in the things that we've done in the past, they're highly mistaken. Because it's written in um, Deuteronomy 5 and 9, I believe Exodus 20, Exodus 20 and 5. In Numbers 14 and 18, I believe that we, it says that we come back every third and fourth generation. And when you die, you go into the spirit world in front of Yahweh and Yahweh and then you be brought back, like I said, every third and fourth generation to be judged in the flesh. That's why one may wonder why an innocent baby died a grievous death or, or things of that nature. It's because you don't know the spirit of that 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 baby had in him. That's why it's written in um, Job 4 and 7, whoever perished being wicked, whoever perished being innocent, roughly paraphrasing. But I'm going to go from there to Deuteronomy chapter 28. And I'm going to start at verse 1. It reads, And it should come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy power to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power. So the Lord was speaking through Moses, telling our people that if we, you know, follow the law, statutes, and commandments as written in the scriptures for the Israelites, then we'll be set on high above all nations. But like I said, we disobeyed, so we received the curses that was written in Deuteronomy 28. 
verses 15 on down because if because verse 15 it reads but it should come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee and the curses go all the way to um verse 68 but i'm gonna grab you know Verse 64 and 68, it reads, and the, verse 64 reads, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And what do our people do to this day? Some of them worship, you know, Allah, Buddha, etc. Some people are even worshiping their self. And as we all know, we only supposed to worship Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And as you can see, it said we will be scattered. He would scatter the among all people. So that's why, like I said, we understand this truth that it's not based off color because we were scattered around the world through the, around the four corners of the earth due to our disobedience. So you may have a Israelite that look like an Asian, but if his father seed, if the if that Israelite father seed line traces back to Israel, then basically than Israelite. But I'm going to jump down to verse 68. It reads, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. And as we know, America is spiritual Egypt. Because we was old, already over there in certain parts of Africa. Basically, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, when the transatlantic slave trade happened, the northern kingdom was already in America, which is spiritual Egypt. So if we was already over there, we wouldn't need ships to get into Egypt over there in those parts of Africa. It said, we must start over. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way wherever I speak unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. That's slaves. And that's who we went through. You know, the transatlantic slave trade. And no man shall buy you. And when they say no man shall buy you, it's not talking about as far as buying you as a slave. It's talking about redeeming you. Because we... I, one of our customers having a kin, kinsman redeemer basically one of your up close kinsmen if you was in you know servitude you they can buy you out of that servitude so you could be free but we're not free as you can see today but some people believe that we're free but that's because they're still enslaved in their mind they don't understand that in order for us to really be free, we have to wait for our Lord Yahweh Shah to return to take the kingdom. And based on the prophecies, it's getting close to that time. We just got to, you know, have patience. Patience means to suffer until he return when the Heavenly Father allows him to do so. But like I said, due to our disobedience, we received the curses that was written in, um, in Deuteronomy 28. In our various captivities that we went through. But I'm going to grab Baruch chapter 4 and verse 6. Because the Lord still loves Israel. The Lord never didn't put off Israel. It reads, ye were sold into the nations for your destruction. No, it said, you, you were sold to the nations not for your destruction. But because you moved, Yahweh Shemir to wrath, ye were delivered unto the enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils. And not to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought ye up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. So yeah, one of the biggest things that we done was basically committed spiritual adultery, worshiping other gods, because it's only one true living power, and that's the power that we have and that we serve. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. These other god, false gods, are no gods. Our people wanted to follow out the heathen, like I said, just like today. They still, some people still follow out the heathen, worshiping, you know, Islam, etc. But I'm going to jump over to verse 28. It reads, For it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh so being returned, seek him ten times more. So we got to diligently seek Yahweh Bashem Yahweh This is not no one day thing, like the scriptures say, Colossians 3 and 12, put on as the elect. But, like the scriptures say, two-thirds of our people are not going to hock me because they don't have 
the the um the gift of faith, the Holy Spirit. That's why us, the hopeful elect, we we thank you how about showing our shot for allowing us to you know receive the um spirit, and we pray that He keep the spirit the spirit on us to endure to the end, because we know that like the scriptures say, if you fall out. Take your hand off the plow. It's better that you have not known the truth, not known the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But I'm going to go from there to Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. And this is the Lord talking about our people because they're hard-headed. It reads, for I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivity, they shall remember themselves. And that's the hopeful elect. The hopeful elect are going to remember and turn back to the Lord. And shall know that I am the Lord, their power, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And you got to think upon the true name, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Not Jesus Christ, etc. But like I said, two-thirds of our people are going to continue to be stiff-necked. All the way up into destruction. And then have to be brought back into the kingdom through the loins of an elect individual that's delivered. Lord willing, I'm part of that number because, as we know, this is we won't know who's the chosen until in the, until that day. Jacob's trouble when all hell is breaking loose, and then you'll see if the Lord is actually dealing with you. But as of right now, we're supposed to be, you know, rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability. Repent and seeking the Lord before all hell breaks loose. I'm going to go from there to Isaiah 30. And I'm going to start at verse 8 because, like I said, the Lord already told us how rebellious and stiff-necked our people are. But, like I said, that's why we understand the hope of that. We understand why we going through the things that we're going through because... Our people are just disobedient. It reads, Now go ye write, Isaiah 30 and 8, Now go write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. So we had these scriptures, like I said, it was written four times for our learning, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that would not hear the law of the Lord. And a lot of people don't want to hear these words. They don't believe on these words. It reads, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. A lot of people like to hear lies. They don't want to hear the truth. They want you to talk smooth to them. They want to hear good things. They want to don't want to hear about how America is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear fire from the missiles. That's going to be their lake of fire when World War Three kick off. Not what Christianity talk about, talking about you 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 die and go to hell for eternity. That's not that's not biblical. That lake of fire is gonna be that the all the missiles that's gonna get shot over America. America is hell. Then the, after that, when Yahweh shot, well before all that happened, Yahweh shot is gonna deliver his elect. Even the ones that you know were put to death for the truth, but they strove for the truth and to death, they're gonna be raised up as well. And receive a crown, just like the ones that don't want might that won't see death. But America is going to be a desert land. But I'm gonna continue on. It reads, "Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the holy one of Israel to cease from before us, because they don't want Yahweh Shai to return. They want to continue on in this wicked kingdom, continue on in their wicked ways. They don't want to put off the old man. They don't want to, you know, fight against the flesh." Because the spirit wars against the flesh. And that's the thing. That's the fight that us, the hopefully elect that we're doing. We're fighting against the flesh to do what's pleasing in the sight of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. It reads. But yeah, I'm going to just finish off right there. But I'm going to just grab one more scripture. Like I said, because the point was basically made, even though it's multiple scriptures that I can grab talking about, you know, the reason why we're in a situation that we're in and the rebelliousness of our people, but it shouldn't take that much to understand because if the Lord put the spirit on you to receive it, you're going to receive it. 
I'm going to go from there to Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16. It reads, Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. And that's what we're doing. We're seeking the old paths. Where's the good way and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, This is the rebellious people, rebellious of our people, which is basically the two thirds as vessels fitting for destruction along with the heathen. We will not walk therein. And this is what they tell. And this is basically a representation of how our people act today when the men of the Lord, when we're out there on the highways and the byways, and the ones that scoff and mock at these videos that we put up. Verse 17 reads, Also I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. So, they're not going to hearken, because the Lord didn't put the spirit on them to want to hearken, because the Lord doesn't want to heal, doesn't want to save everyone. Like Yahweh Shah said in um, Matthew chapter 13, he said, it was given unto you. If you receive this truth to, to know the mysteries of the kingdom of, of heaven, to them it's not given. So that can include your family members, your loved ones, your co-workers, etc. Everybody is going to receive this truth. Two-thirds will be destroyed. That That's basically saying two out of every three Israelites is going to be destroyed. Only the one-third is going to be living, and you got to understand that. You got to understand this is a spiritual war. You can't put your emotions in it. You got to understand that the Lord knows a person's spirit. You don't know what that, in your past generation, that your parent might not have been your parent. Your woman might not have been your woman. You don't know. So you got to understand that, just like the situation with Lot. Like the scripture saying, um, Luke 17 and 32, I believe. Remember Lot's wife. Lot had a woman all the way up until the destruction. So... You could be in that same situation. You got to understand that and keep that in mind. But you got to understand that just like Job, how he lost things, but he kept his faith in Yahweh Yahushua and he received more in the end. That's why, like I said earlier, these scriptures were written in full time for our learning so that we can, you know, have faith and apply these scriptures to our life. But that's all I got. Call Halloim La Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Kakadash. That will honor the apostles and elders of great millstone who teach and rule well with truth and sincerity who I learn from daily Lord willing and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom.